Welcome to this podcast from the IS Services Training and Publication Group in Trinity College Dublin. My name is Connor Rappel and in this podcast I will cover the procedure for making changes to existing web pages and college websites using Adobe Dreamweaver. The following steps are only appropriate if you have already defined your site in Dreamweaver and downloaded the site files and folders as can usually be seen on the right hand side of Dreamweaver. If you have not already done this, then please see our podcast which covers how to define a site in Dreamweaver. Once you are ready to make your changes, the first step is to browse to the web page you wish to update, as if you were an ordinary person viewing the website. Open your web browser, Internet Explorer in this example, and browse to the web page as if you were a normal viewer of the website. The goal of this first step is to check the page as it appears online so that you are familiar with its current content and also to verify the URL or web address of the page so ensuring you know what the file name of the web page is and what folder it is in. If you do not see a file name ending with .php at the end of this address, as is the case here, then you are dealing with the index.php file in the particular folder you have browsed to. In this example we have been asked to make a change to the main homepage of this School of Astronomy site. After browsing to this page, we can tell that the file name is index.php and that it is located in the top level folder of the website. The second step is to download the web page file once more in Dreamweaver. This ensures that you have the latest version of the file in case someone else has updated it since you last downloaded it. As you already have a local copy of the file, you can download it again by using the green download arrow in the site files panel. First, single click on the file name, index.php in this case, to select it, and then click the green down pointing arrow to download the file. A message appears at the bottom right indicating file activity complete, which lets you know the file was downloaded successfully. The next step is to open the file for editing by double clicking on it in the site files panel. Ensure that you are in local view before you do this. Note that on most college websites what you see in Dreamweaver after opening a file may only be the raw content of that web page. You may not see all the navigation and design elements that appear when you browse to the web page in a web browser. As a college web author this allows you to concentrate on updating the informational content. The College Web Office can be contacted if any navigation or design elements need updating. For example, to enter the new text, click into the page at the appropriate point and begin typing, in a similar way to editing a document in Microsoft Word. I'm going to make a small addition to the main heading on this web page. Note that when you open a file in Dreamweaver, the file name appears in the small tab at the top left of the screen. When you make changes to the file, an asterisk will appear beside the file name, indicating that you have not yet saved your changes. To save the changes, choose File, Save from the main menu. Note that the asterisk disappears. It is possible to have multiple pages open for editing at the same time, and you will see a tab for each page appear at the top left. There is only one in this case. As there may be multiple files with the same file name in your site, for example you may have many files named index.php, it is a good idea to close each file once you are finished working on it. To close the file, choose File Close from the main menu. The local copy of this web page on this computer has now been updated, but in order for this to be reflected online, the file must be uploaded to the web server. To do this, you must select the file again from the right hand side by clicking on the file name, index.php in this case. And then to upload the file, click on the upward pointing arrow that says put files. Click no if asked to put dependent files. We are not prompted in this case. Remember that the method of uploading and downloading your files using the blue and green arrows will only work if your local file and folder structure matches that on the web server. If not, then you will need to upload the file using a drag and drop method, which is outlined in our podcast covering how to define a site in Dreamweaver. 
Final step now is to browse to the updated web page to check the updates. If the web page is already being displayed in the web browser window, you will simply need to refresh the view. If everything appears as expected, then no further steps are required and your work is complete. This completes the podcast on making changes to existing web pages. Many thanks for your attention. Further information on the types of changes you can make, working with text, links, images and tables, can be found in the Maintaining College Websites course notes, which are available on the IS Services website.